Hi friends, how are you? I thought today would be a good time to sew together. So I'm right now, I'm working on a top. I will show you it in a little bit, but I have decided to, so it's going to be a tunic top, but it, um, there was an issue with the fabric that I didn't find, I mean, I kind of, I saw it when I was going to cut it out, but I decided not to worry about it, <laughs> which I could have just cut around it. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking maybe it's just dirt or something. It kind of looked like cat vomit, but I don't have a cat and there's no way that that's what it was. <laughs> I'm almost finished with this top. I was going to do the hem and then I realized that the cat vomit spot is right at the front along where my hem was going to be. And I thought, okay, right now, <laughs> I, I mean, I bought this top for a postpartum top and it surprised me by actually fitting over my stomach now I'm 34 weeks I I was shocked to see that it fits <laughs> that was not my intention and honestly when I first put it on it looked like a walrus anyway oh I have to make some progress while I'm talking to you okay so I looked at that spot and I thought okay right now I have a big belly so I can't see anything beyond that <laughs> That spot won't bother me, but <laughs> in a little over a month, <laughs> I will be able to see past my stomach again, and I will go, what the heck was I thinking, leaving this cat puke-like spot on my tunic top. So I decided to chop it off. Well, then I had a top that was shorter than I wanted. I decided to make a pretty thick band to add to the bottom. The reason I'm not showing you the full top yet is because I really need to wash it. Not for the cat puke part, <laughs> but because I have so many pieces or so many markings from my washable marker. So my husband and my son just left to go hiking. I was feeling a bit nervous. That's why I decided to go ahead and do this video. Thought I need to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> oh my gosh, so I went through the hole. Did you get this? Did you remember this? What about this? Did you see that there's rain on the radar? Did you get the sunblock? And to his credit, he had remembered everything he didn't realize about the rain. So he went ahead and grabbed some gear for that but he had everything else. But I am very, you know, if you've watched my Vlogmas, you know, safety. <laughs> I am very safety conscious. And I always think ahead, okay, what could go wrong? What do we need? <laughs> my, I grew up, so my mom was a paramedic when I was growing up. And then she was an ER nurse. And I remember when she was in paramedic school, she had some books in her closet that were <laughs> honestly accident scenes and <laughs> different traumas, which I really shouldn't have been looking at, I'm thinking now. I mean, I wouldn't want my son to look at them, but I was fascinated. Um, I would always ask about what did they do for these people? How could they help? Anyway, so it's kind of always been a thing that I think of how to deal with emergencies and anticipate issues. My husband grew up completely differently. He grew up um, playing with machetes without any adult supervision, playing with fireworks without any adult supervision, 
He likes to tell the story of one day when they set their field on fire and went running by their dad with a hose and fire extinguisher because they were filming this movie that uh, where they wanted a war scene. So they blew up all these fireworks to create all this smoke and they set the field on fire and their dad just sat there like, Everything okay? I don't honestly. I don't even know if he asked if everything was okay. But these, you know, little boys were trying to deal with a field on fire, and you know they were okay. But that has been a thing with my husband and I since we've been married. And then once we had Jack, our child, it has been a thing where he's so much better now. But it, I used to just like feel so stressed <laughs> about his lack of safety awareness. Bear with. We were, when we got back from our honeymoon, when we were first married, we spent some time at his mom and her husband's house. And I walked into the kitchen one time and my husband and my mother-in-law were in there and my husband was, had this huge knife and he was like big, goofy, stupid smile on his face. I love my husband. Like he is the best man in the whole world. So I can say this, but anyway, <laughs> and he like flipped a knife and was trying to catch it by the handle. And I said, what are you doing? <laughs> you are going to chop your hand. What are, you, what are you doing? Like, he's not a circus performer. This isn't something he has experience with. Because we had, like, zero money at the time and no insurance. So I said, okay, well, you keep doing that, but we don't have any insurance and if you chop off your finger, it's staying off. <laughs> Walked out of the room. <laughs> I was so irritated. <laughs> then on the same trip, uh, this, this was the trip to drive me insane. Like, this was all of Melanie's buttons were pushed. I'm Melanie, by the way. <laughs> if I haven't said that yet. Anyway, so one time he was going because his... They had these big trees on their property and like tall, very tall trees. And my uh, mother-in-law's um, bird feeder was, or no, chimes were like stuck up in the tree, really high up. So my husband was going to get this giant ladder to untangle it from the tree. And I said, okay, I need to go get my shoes on and I'll help hold the ladder. Well, I come out two minutes later. My husband is on the ladder at the top of the ladder. So this is like a 12 foot ladder. Nobody's holding it. It's on sand and like a couple little wobbly step things, whatever those are called, you know, the step things you put in a garden. And he's reaching up high on his tiptoes with a garden hoe. I almost like still the memory of walking out and seeing him like that about... <laughs> I just, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> but at the time, I said, what the H are you doing? Get down from there right now. <laughs> I asked you to wait for me. You couldn't have waited two minutes for me to get my shoes on? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine. Anyway. And I, at this point, 
I had already worked in the ER for several years, not as a nurse, but in different, um, like registration and then a unit coordinator. And um, I can't, I don't, I don't think I worked as a tech yet, but so I've seen a lot of things and heard a lot of stories. I was just like, are you kidding me right now? Uh, yeah, that was not fun. And then, and I said, this, this ladder, it was so wobbly. Anyway, and then <laughs> this funny thing, another ladder story. Oh my gosh. I do not let my husband near a ladder in the same trip. Another ladder story. I came out one day, he had decided to help clean the gutters for them. My husband is very helpful and he loves working out in the garden and he's a hard worker in anything he does, whether it's something he's paid for or helping out family. I mean, he's just gold. So he, he decided to help them by cleaning out their gutters and I came out and he was on the balcony and he had taken the A-frame ladder, which is supposed to be like this, open, closed it and had it leaning up against the gutter and their house is not small. So, I mean, it was probably at 12 feet and then I think he had to lean up a little, like he still had to reach up, right? Nobody spotted him. Once again, what the H are you doing apart from trying to kill me? And he said, as if I'm unreasonable, what? This is how you use that ladder. I said, no, that's definitely not how you use that ladder. They make special ladders for just a single ladder. You know what I mean? Like, that ladder is an A-frame. It's supposed to be open to be supported. It's not supposed to be used, closed, leaning against a house. It's not safe. Yes, it is. I know how to use a ladder. And so I point to the sticker on said ladder that has somebody doing that and a big X through it. This is fine. It's fine. Which I hate it when he says that when I bring up very reasonable point. I am OSHA certified. So, and he doesn't talk like that, by the way. <laughs> That's just my <laughs> imitation voice. He doesn't sound like that. He's a very lovely man. <laughs> but, um, you know what's funny as a side note? So that's when I'm imitating him and something he said that I don't like, I sound like that. That's the voice I use. When he's imitating me, his voice is deeper than his. And he goes, that's not safe. <laughs> I'm like, why are you making me sound like a man? Oh my God, it was hilarious. But he always does it when he's imitating me, which he doesn't do very often. But I remember this whole conversation. Anyway. So he, I, I don't know why he was OSHA certified for something, but he wasn't certified. He had an OSHA person, which is like a safety, work safety thing, come to their work. I don't know why he would have had that because I don't think he, he worked for that job yet, but come to their work and give them an instruction about ladder safety. That's not the same as being certified. <laughs> Or even as listening and being aware of actual safety. Anyway, obviously. So I was like, I don't care who you spoke with or what training you have had because you're obviously not using it. This is wrong and it says so on the ladder. He wasn't having any of it. So I just went in. I was like, well, don't call me when you fall over and break your ass. So I looked online and found the OSHA site 
in their ladder safety document where they explicitly say not to use an A-frame ladder as a single lean-to ladder. And I screenshotted it and emailed it to <laughs> I was like, this is what you can do with your OSHA certification or something. I don't remember, but it was really funny because it only took us, like if we ever get in an argument or a disagreement like that where we're pissed at each other, we get over it pretty quickly. And anyway, he had come in, I think within 20 minutes and we were able to laugh about it and yeah. So all that to say, when he said he's going hiking with our son today, I was like, okay, did you get the sunblock? How much water do you have? Do you know it's raining? Uh, there are lots of cliffs in this area. They're going hiking. Please don't let him run away from you. Don't think that he can just run off. Well, because sometimes he thinks something's okay and I think it's not okay. So we have differences there. And I just, even though, you know, he, our son has survived this long, I feel like I have to say these things so that I've said them and they're in his head and then they can go and I feel like, okay, I've said it. Even if he knows some of these things, you know. All right, so I'm going to finish this top and I will talk to you again later. It is done and I am in love. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Let me tell you about this pattern. This is the unwind top from Pattern Emporium. It can be all different lengths. It does, in the main pattern, have a hemband, or you could do without, and cuffs on the sleeves. I think it might have different necklines. Usually they do, and they do include a hood option, but I've changed it a little bit, so more on that. I chose the size 14 based on my high bust measurement, which is what you go off for this pattern. So right now my high bust, Hannah, my high bust is 37 inches. Um, my bust is 41 inches. That's two sizes difference, at least. But the instructions in this pattern say just go off your high bust. And then if you need to grade out for the hip measurement, then you can do that. Now that I've made it, I feel like I could have sized down to a size 12 because I was expecting this to be just for postpartum. I was shocked that it fits over my belly at 34 weeks pregnant. Pleasantly surprised, but still shocked. It does fulfill one of my requirements for making clothing right now, which is that it would be easily adjustable as my body changes after I give birth. So I feel like this pattern has such simple lines. It's basically uh, the front and the back are the same pattern piece. They just adapt the neckline a little bit. And then you have, and the sleeves are all, it's all one thing. Then you have the cuff pieces and the hemband if you choose to do that, and the hood if you choose to do that. So it's very simple lines. I feel like as I, as my body changes, I'll be able to easily pull in and adapt as I've actually already done. <laughs> so um, I do think I could have sized down though to a size 12 because I, I don't like a big fit. Now, when I first put this on, I uh, felt like a walrus. I didn't have my hood done or my neckline or anything yet. I'd stabilized my neckline, which they don't say to do in the pattern, but I did because this is a very stretchy French terry that I made it with and kind of shifty. So I went ahead and stabilized the whole neckline I put it on and it looked like a sack. 
Now granted, I had also extended the length four inches because I wanted it to be tunic length and I was thinking that I might do a stacked split hem, but I decided not to do that in the end. So I took off, well, I had to take off some inches because I found a flaw in the fabric. And then I had to add a hem band, which I hadn't been intending to do, but I really like it. So I'm glad that that happened. Now my hips are a 44 and a half inches right now. This, like I said, the size 14 had tons of room. Even though I felt like a walrus <laughs> at first testing, I thought I'm going to keep going because at that point, once I put on this, the cuffs on the sleeves, if I pulled up the sleeves, it kind of gave this look of a waist. And I knew that I was going to adapt the top enough where it might add some different visual interest and be okay. I'm just looking at my notes. So I keep everything for the project I'm working on. I have a special clipboard just for that project where I put all my measurements and notes and everything. So the first change that I made was when I added the hood, I added a lining. Now the instructions for that are not included in the pattern, which honestly I was disappointed by. I ended up finding a good tutorial on the IM Patterns website. I kind of used that and then kind of just did something and it worked out. So I ended up putting the lining in with this, and then where in this pattern, it just has you fold over this piece and stitch it. I folded it over the lining piece so that I would have a little bit of this on the inside too. Cinches if I want it to. I also added grommets or eyelets, whatever you want to say there. For the first time. These are vintage from my husband's grandmother's stash. I really had fun with the finishes for this top. I said that one of my goals this year was to do something extra to each thing that I made to make it mine and really feel special. I looked online and found these on Amazon and they just made my 80s child heart sing. I love the splatter paint. It's a little bit metallic. I don't know if you can see that. And then I found these little ends to put on. They just kind of slip over the plastic ends of the shoestring. And I just love the look of those. This, it came with a set of different colors. Here it is. It came with a little box and five different metal tones. Let me just take one out so you can see what you do. It's so simple. So basically, you have your shoestring end, you stick it in here, the plastic part, kind of clamp it down. Well, this is already on your shoestring. Clamp it down and then you just slide this tube over the end and it looks like this. When I put it in the washer and the dryer, I covered these up because they were banging around even though I turned it inside out. I covered them up with a scrap piece of sweatshirting. Then I moved on to adding a zipper. This is not in the pattern either, but let me show you. So I added this exposed zipper I got it for $1.80 at Walmart the other day. And I added it because um, I'm, I wanted something that would be easily adaptable for breastfeeding. So some of my requirements for my clothing, easy to breastfeed, easy to go out and work out, or go for a walk impromptu, comfy to sleep in, <laughs> and also able to easily adapt to as my um, hormones are going crazy and I'm getting hot and cold and everything, something that would be good for that. I feel like I designed this, the changes that fit all of those boxes. So this zipper 
it goes down far enough where I can breastfeed and it's not, I don't even feel it against my skin. It's really nice. I also feel like it works well to break up these stripes, which it really needed something. Now, if you look at the bottom of the zipper, I don't know why, but it really gave me trouble. Um, I think because this fabric's a bit shifty, I ended up having to fudge it a little bit and I kind of, in order to get this fabric to lay flat, I kind of had to make this cool little triangle and then I added a little piece of white double brush poly on the inside to cover that. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to pretend that this is a very high-end, expensive, sporty top and that's how they would do it. And that was enough to convince me that it looked just fine. <laughs> oh, and then I, as I said, so I found, this was all done, I was ready to hem, found the cat puke looking thing. I, th I think it's actually, it looks like maybe the dye wasn't quite right in that area. Anyway, I added this banded hem and I really like it. I was concerned that I wouldn't like it, but it's really nice. This top is so cozy. It's the um, French terry is really light and airy feeling, but because of the length and the arm um, the long sleeves. It's just perfect temperature wise. I did spend a lot of time matching stripes on this top <laughs> doing my best because this top has a seam on the top of the sleeves. So this one you can see, I mean, is this one that looks pretty darn good? This one's pretty good. One of them looks better than the other. Ooh, that looks pretty good too. I'm pretty happy with that. And then I got the side seams. Well, I'm not gonna stand up again, but they, they look really good. And basically what I did when I was cutting it out, I, uh, cause it's cut out on the fold and I just pinned all along the stripes, not just the edge, but like <laughs> along the stripes while my fabric was folded. Then I put the pattern piece over the top and I lined up the bottom of the pattern piece. I looked to see where that was. So it was on the bottom of a white line. So when I then went to do the back part, I lined it up on the bottom of the white line. And then I even on the pattern pieces, the, the paper, I, made little marks along the sleeves where the white lines matched up so that when I cut out the other sleeve, I could make sure everything was lined up. And I really had to be careful because this fabric was just, like I said, just so shifty. It's kind of loose for a French terry. So I had, I had to be just extra careful with all of those stripes. Then when I went to sew it, instead of putting pins in everywhere, I used a clip for every white stripe as I was um, pin, like clipping the fabric in order to sew it. I clipped every stripe together. This was only a quarter inch seam allowance for the whole garment, so it was pretty easy. Like I knew if I put my clips on there, it would clip it together past that quarter inch so that that would be lined up. That's how I did that. <laughs> so one other adaptation that I made, I cut quite a bit out to add a little more close shaping here, which I feel like gave me more of a waist, which I like. <laughs> so this is what I cut out from here. So you can see, I basically just went a little straighter along this white line and then curved back down on both sides. I think it's possible that the size 12, which would be a size down, would be 
enough to add some more fitting, but I'm not sure. But it, it was so easy to do. I turned it inside out. I used my washable marker to just kind of eyeball. I basted it, checked it on, it looked great. So then I went ahead and sewed it. And then I used this piece that I cut off one side as a template for what to do for the other side, lined up the stripes and went to town on it. It was such an easy fix and I love it. It's so comfortable. I think with our weather in the spring, I mean, we still have winter through February tends to get really cold. Right now in January, it's 60 degrees outside, but our big freezes tend to happen in February. So I think this will be just super cozy for layering, for wearing around the house, for my impromptu naps. <laughs> And, uh, and also as the weather gets warmer, like I could have worn this today at 60, 50, 60 degrees outside. So I'm super happy. I, it's an unexpected success. I was putting all this effort into getting, you know, this nice, um, drawstring, which I'd never put a drawstring in and lining the hood, which I'd never done and doing these little toggles at the end. I was putting so much effort to make it really special. And at the back of my mind, I thought, oh God, what if this doesn't work? You know, what if it just still looks like a walrus dress when I'm done? But I thought, nope, I'll just keep adapting it until it looks great. I was also concerned that this color would be a little dark for me, but I think with the light pink, it actually looks great. And I was able to use up my scraps. So that was exciting too. Thank you so much for joining me. I love connecting and I love chatting with you, sharing stories. And I really enjoyed in Vlogmas when so many of you said you were able to put my videos on and just do your sewing and listen to me go on and giggle about things or tell silly stories. That is just perfect. So thank you for joining me and I will see you again soon. Bye.